Welcome everybody to the Open Active Adoption Engagement Forum on uh, the 1st of May 2024. Um, great to have everybody uh, here. Thank you everyone for joining and welcome. I'll start with our usual reminder. I think we've got a few uh, new people on the call today, which is fantastic. Um, if you're not already, then please do uh, think about joining our, our Open Active Slack workspace. Um, really free to, to register and join. Um, and it's a um, really good place to keep up to date with all the latest discussions in Open Active, all the latest updates about the uh, community meetings that we have. So um, both the Adoption Engagement Forum and also the W3C group. Um, and there's also links on there to um, th you know resources, so things like the, the meeting slides from um, these meetings uh, and past links to sort of the past recordings as well. So um, please do, if you're not already, think about um, joining joining us there and the links um, links there on the uh, on the slide, slack.openactive.io. Um, and if you have any uh, issues or trouble um, joining them, drop us an email at hello at openactive.io um, and we'll be happy to help. So a quick look at the agenda and we've got planned for today. Um, so we'll start with the usual um, kind of round of introductions just to get everyone um, familiar with, with the other um, participants and other people on the call. Um, then uh, today's session is uh, focused on some work we've been doing with the Active Pregnancy Foundation um, in, in recent months. Um, and so uh, we were hoping to have uh, Marlies here, but maybe Sally in her stead will be able to jump in because um, um, and just give us a, a kind of very quick uh, couple of minutes introduction as to as to the Active Pregnancy Foundation and, and your and their work or your work in Sally's case, um, uh, just for anyone who isn't isn't kind of familiar with them. Uh, then I'll I will be providing a kind of summary of some of the work we've been doing today and, and a workshop we ran uh, in collaboration with the Active Pregnancy Foundation a, a month or two ago. Um, and then hopefully um, we'll be able to uh, look at some next steps uh, in, in a bit more detail and, and how we can really turn some of the insights uh, and, and information that we've, we've gleaned to date uh, into some more kind of tangible actions and some, some you know, some real, real, real life uh, things that, that we can um, take forward. Um, so that's the kind of plan for today. And then and hopefully at the, at the end of the call, there'll be, be some time for anybody to raise any other business as well. So that's the kind of plan for, for today. Um, as I say, I'll start with the usual kind of round of introductions, just so, so everyone has a chance to get to, to know the other people on the call. So I'll start with myself. Um, my name is Tim Corby, and I work for an organization called the Open Data Institute, or ODI. Um, and we have a small team within the ODI, which is funded by Sport England to um, steward uh, the Open Active initiative. And um, so we provide secretariat services for the community forums like, like this one and the steering committee in the W3C group. Um, and we also do some work to um, prov provide technical maintenance of the Open Active infrastructure and, and some kind of engagement and outreach and things like that as well. Um, and uh, it probably makes sense to to kind of introduce my other colleagues which are on the call so if i come to you next andrew you know. hi uh, i'm andrew newman i'm principal data specialist at the odi uh, and apologies zoom is running really slowly on my laptop today so um apologies for any pauses great thank you andrew and uh howard hello uh howard askew a data technologist at the open data institute and i support the open active um, initiative from a technical perspective, looking at some of the infrastructure and helping to um, open up data, share data, open data for, around activities. Great. Thank you, Howard. Uh, Sally. I never in my life, if I wished Marlies would turn up really <laughs> like quickly. <laughs> So I'm Sally Kettle. I'm uh, co-CEO with Marlies of the Active Pregnancy Foundation. I'll tell you more about them obviously later. Brilliant. Thanks, Sally. Uh, Lindsay? Sorry, Lindsay, put you on the spot. Sorry, my, my laptop wouldn't unmute. I was like, <laughs> uh, I'm Lindsay. I'm from Hartsport and Physical Activity Partnership. Um, I am an activity finder officer, so I work specifically um, and only on um, the activity finder getting people on it, getting people using it, um, and on the moving more website. Brilliant. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, Tom? Hi, everyone. Tom Marley, CEO at Played, and we provide activity finders to a number of people on the call, active partnerships, NGPs, et cetera, to help make 
it easier to discover local activities. Great, thanks, Tom. Uh, Yasmin. Hi, I'm Yasmin. I am Everyday Active Officer at, at Active Kettner Medway, um, and I lead on Open Data and Activity Finder in Kettner Medway. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, Grace? Hi, yeah, I'm Grace. I work for Somerset Activity and Sports Partnership. Um, similar to Yasmin, I'm, um, I am just handle the SASP Activity Finder and keep an ear to the ground for anything Open Data related. Great, thanks, Grace. Uh, Malika, is it? Sorry if I've said that wrong. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, it's Malika Felton. Um, I'm based at Bournemouth University. I'm a lecturer in health and exercise physiology. Um, Malie's invited me along today as I'm hoping to help them set up their kind of pregnancy specific um, activity directly based on some postdoc research that I did talking to women and mothers about what they want from services on directory. So I'm hoping to add that to the Active Pregnancy Foundation work. Fantastic. Okay. Great to have you here. Thanks for, for joining us. Um, Jules. Hi, yes, I'm Jules from the York Sport Foundation. Uh, I'm comms manager. I'm here to cause trouble and eat gummy bears. And this <laughs> is my last gummy bear. In, <laughs> in that order. Um, Emily? Hi, yeah, I'm um, the Healthy Active Adults Manager at Active Oxfordshire. Um, and this is a sort of quite a new area for me and we're not currently using um sort of open active or open data um so it, a bit of learning just heard about it um on the this mum moves training on monday um so here to find out a bit more fantastic well it's great to have you thank you very much for joining us and, and welcome um brad Hi everyone, I'm Brad. I'm a health and physical activity officer at Active Dorset um, and I lead on our work around open data and activity finders. Great, thanks Brad. And then Nick, are you there? Uh, yes, I am uh, hiding. Um, uh, Nick Evans from IMIN, uh, just um, popping in to say hi and see what's going on. Great, thanks. Always good to have you here, Nick. Thank you uh, for joining us. I think I have got everyone there. I'm very, very sorry if I missed anyone. Um, uh, participants were jumping around my screen, so I was trying, I was trying to keep track. But I, th I think I, uh, I've gone through everyone. So, um, as I say, apologies if, if I did miss anyone. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, and and again, welcome. And uh, I'm very sorry, Sally, but Molly's hasn't joined. Oh, no. <laughs> So I think we might, might end up with you on the spot if that's okay. It doesn't it doesn't have to be anything too crazy. Um, yeah, it's fine. Quick intro to the Active Pregnancy Foundation, if that's okay. Yeah, of course, no problem. And actually, Marley's literally joining right now. Mm, there you go. But right, if I if I kind of give an overview of the Active Pregnancy Foundation in general, and then hopefully Marley's might be able to come in if there's anything specific that needs answering because she's leading on this project. Um, so we set up in 2020, right in the middle of. Uh, COVID, which was a huge blessing for us as a charity because I don't think it would have survived if we weren't all meeting online. Um, and our remit really is to support women to stay active throughout pregnancy and beyond. And we do that by training um, healthcare and fitness professionals through a project called the This Mum Moves Ambassador Training Programme, um, enabling them to go out and disseminate current information and guidance to the women that they work with. But we are also um, woman focused and um, we have a website which is full of resources for them. And also we tackle it through social media, not always successfully, but we're getting there. So we're sort of brand new, um, kind of learning on the job. Marley's is the the blue to my yellow. So she she's the, the one who's great with all the research and she's based up at Sheffield Hallam University. And I live in Northwest Wales, former PT and um, yeah, adventurer. So that's us in a nutshell. Great, thanks, Sally. Um, and Marley's, I don't know if if you're there, if you or are able to speak, if if you are there, if you um you want to add anything to that and, and kind of just introduce your yourself maybe as well thanks tim i don't know can you hear me if you could just give me a nod yes yeah we can hear you yeah uh, apologies everyone i'm joining from the car i've been stuck in traffic between barnsley and sheffield so apologies for that um just to echo what um sally has said we're a charity that's been set up to support women to be active um, throughout their childbearing years and 
this project in particular has been around connecting them to some of the opportunities um, to be physically active. And I think this has been echoed in the recent Active Lives survey is, is that there is still an opportunity gap between a men and women, and, and we know that that gap is particularly um, wide when it comes to women in their childbearing years. And it's quite often related to issues around not knowing what is available for them locally, but also questions around, is this a safe um, opportunity to access? Are the instructors qualified? So all sorts of questions. And, and this is a, a project that we, we've implemented to try and, and, and address that need really. So thank you so much um, for the opportunity, Tim, and just once again, apologies for, for being late. No, no problem at all. And, and thank you for joining us. Uh, and sorry to hear about your, <laughs> your uh, bad journey. I, I think there's a couple of Yorkshire based people on the call who, who will be able to uh, sympathise and, and probably picture what is that almost exactly where you are. <laughs> so um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for joining. Um, that's great. So um, that just sets a bit of context, uh, um, just for anyone who wasn't uh, familiar with the Active Pregnancy Foundation. Um, I just wanted to move on then to kind of set a bit more context about kind of open active and how we got involved um, and started working on this project and, and sort of summarize some of the work we've done to date. So um, uh, regular attendees on these calls might recognize this this picture um, and it relates to a sort of piece of work we've been doing over the kind of last year or two um, to develop use cases within open active um, and so we've we've kind of seen the need over the last couple of years to to try and increase the social impact that that open active is is having and to kind of um create a wider reach uh, uh, and ensure that open active is really representative of the sector as a whole um and uh yeah as i say uh, create that kind of wider reach to to Im improve that and will increase that social impact and and over the last 12 to 18 months we've developed a, a framework to try and um identify use cases that that can help us to do that and and it's kind of focused around two two key or overarching parts one is um convening and engaging with uh, groups of um organizations or or individuals that have a shared interest around a specific kind of thematic area or, or topic um and then work with those um groups to to really explore the potential for open active to be to be used or applied in those areas to to really um in, you know, have that impact to, and to to help um, in those areas. And so uh, through that work, we uh, got in touch or we connected with the Active Pregnancy Foundation and, and we um, talked a, a lot to Marlies and, and Sally about this um, idea of uh, trying to fill that gap that Marlies mentioned about, um, you know, making it easier for for this kind of audience to to find opportunities to be active and, and more importantly find the, the right information that they need to be able to make informed decisions about opportunities to be active and, and whether they're right for them um, and this idea of potentially creating a, a kind of specific directory for for this audience um, and there was kind of two two parts to this that we thought we needed to to think about one is defining those data requirements what what is the kind of key data points or key bits of information that this audience really need to be able to make those decisions about opportunities and whether they're right for them and then how we map that data, where is that data and, and how do we access it and, and get it open and get it into a directory. And so the work to date was really been focused on that first area on the, about the data requirements. Um, and in the last couple of months, we, we ran a, an online workshop in collaboration with um, the Active Pregnancy Foundation, and, and we had some fantastic uh, discussion in the, in the workshop. Um, my colleague, Darren, who I should um, give a shout out to, he's on, he's on leave at, at the moment. So unfortunately he, he can be on today's call, but um, he was a, a big help in running the workshop as well. So I need to um, make sure I give a shout out to him. Um, but yes, we we had some great discussions and we, we broke it down in, into three kind of areas. Um, information or data about activities and um, the organizers of those activities uh, and the places where those activities take place. Um, and I wasn't expecting uh, anybody to quite be able to make out the the actual word the writing on the uh, on the jam board that we use there with the sticky notes but um, uh, just to give you a kind of impression of how that workshop was run and we kind of had this collaborative discussion using using an online tool called Google Jamboard. Um, and so I'll just kind of dive into a bit more detail of, of 
the findings we had and the discussion we had in across those three areas. So um, as I say, we, we discussed um, what really are, are those key um, bits of information that, that we need, and we had some really wide ranging discussions. And, and then towards the end, we, we kind of tried to um, pin it down into, into a bit of a prioritization exercise. Uh, you know, what, what really are those top priority items um, that stand out, those one or two really key bits across those three areas. So in terms of activities themselves, that the highest priority items that came out were making sure that um, activities have appropriate imagery. Um, oh, and some don't even have imagery at all, but but the ones that do often don't have appropriate imagery um, that, that is appealing or attractive to this audience. Um, and uh, also the next one was safety information. Um, and there's a, a kind of screen grab there, which I took from the um, Active Pregnancy Foundation's website of a, of a, a kind of questionnaire or form that um, women can complete um, before they take part in act an activity. Um, to sort of see whether um, it's safe for them and, and their individual needs or, or whether they might need um, some kind of healthcare professional to, to talk to them, to discuss their needs with, with that professional to, to make sure that what the activity that they're doing is safe for them. So, so that was a really key, key one that, that came out. And then the last one in terms of the kind of higher priority areas um, when it comes to activities was sort of information for new starters, you know, what to expect when you turn up, uh, what level is the activity, is it for beginners or, or more advanced people, um, what kind of should should people be wearing, um, you know, what's appropriate dress code or, or what should, should people be wearing, um, and sort of age information, so even specifically, like, you know, is it available to teenage mums or, or is it just available to adults, so that kind of information as well. And then some of the other things that were discussed, um, which are on the kind of right hand side of this this side. So um, I think this first one's perhaps more of a kind of user experience type type thing for for people um, actually using the activity finders uh, at the end at the kind of end of the process, um, and that's a kind of appropriate tagging and being able to filter or search for things like. Um, pregnancy friendly activities or whether activities are suitable for new mums or um, children are welcome or um, you know anything anything like that um, and, and even being able to filter um, uh, on some of the things we'll get to later in terms of places you know you know whether somewhere has a crash or, or certain facilities but yeah that, that kind of appropriate tagging of activities and, and being able to use that tagging to then filter for activities um, as a kind of user experience thing at the end of the process. Um, any social opportunities attached to the activity? So things like, you know, other options to stay for a coffee or a drink or, or a social gathering after the activity. Um, that, that was quite an important one and, and really clear pricing information. Um, you do, do you have to pre-book, pre-pay in advance? Um, if you're unable to attend, can you, can you roll over your payment as credit for another class? Um, all those kind of things. So, and, and you know, really clear pricing information and, and guidance as to, as to how you can pay for the class and, and whether you have to pay for just one individual class or, or whether you, you know, pay for a, a group or a, a program of, you know, multiple classes. Uh, whether the class is part of a wider program, for example, you know, whether it's part of a trimester one program um, and, and if so, whether that program is kind of endorsed by a, a, a you know, an appropriate authority or, or um, reputable source um, to make sure that it's kind of safe safe in that and that's a kind of running theme really I think is is making sure that the activity is safe and safe and appropriate and then and then finally kind of any info about childcare can you bring um children along is there crash or child care available um you know if, if there's a new mum or, or a mum who's expecting maybe a, a second or third child and they've got um, siblings are they able to bring them along to the to the class um, if so are there any age limits um, of, of the children they can bring along so that's kind of high level look at what we've we looked at under activities and there, there were a couple of other things as well that I've not included everything there but that, that was the kind of high level look um, in terms of organizers it was a, it was a bit shorter there wasn't so much to to focus on there the, the really key one and again as I say is a bit of a running theme around um, safety and assurance of activities but the, the kind of really high priority one was what qualifications or verification verifications are held by the instructors or the or the organization that's running running the group 
Um, is that instructor or organization registered with a professional body? Um, do they hold valid insurance? Um, do they have kind of appropriate um, training or qualifications with, with working with uh, pregnant women or, um, you know, women in uh, this particular audience? And then in terms of other things that we looked at, um, it's stuff that I think is is often already um, kind of included in data, which is great, um, but maybe isn't always completely accurate or completely uh, relevant. So things like contact information for the organizer to get in touch and ask any questions and, and links to any social media or websites. And I think when it comes to contact information, one consideration is, is in terms of kind of personal data. If the organizer or the organization doesn't have an organization email address or contact number, um, and it's just a kind of instructor's personal email or, or personal phone number, um, how, how that gets included or, or represented in data in the data. And, and then finally, the, the places. So um, the highest priority thing here, or the, the really key thing to think about was the kind of am amenity features that are available at the venue. So um, whether there's things like breastfeeding and bottle feeding for, or bottle warming facilities, rather, whether there's baby changing facilities, whether there's space to leave your pram or buggy while you're taking part in the activity, um, whether there's a crash or, or if there's any childcare options, as, as I kind of have mentioned that one before. Um, and then in terms of other things that, that came up in the discussions, things like transport information, um, what parking is available uh, and uh, how accessible it, is it at the venue, um, and any public transport links as well, you know, what bus routes or train routes or public transport links are there to the venue. Um, and an in interesting one that someone raised was, uh, you know, information about how to actually navigate the facility once you're there, what, you know, what room is the activity actually in and how do you get to it and what do you do when you get to the venue. Um, and um, there was even discussion about how some venues have started to create kind of videos and things um, which show, you know, show you where you go, what the entrance looks like, what, where the reception desk is and how to get to it, who you need to talk to when you get to the venue and, and find directions and things like that. Um, so that's an interesting one to think about. And then um, lastly, on this um, this particular topic, uh, kind of how do, you know, or how do we direct? And again, this might be um, something that is uh, as much a kind of user experience um, thing for activity finders as, as well as um, as well as for the data entry itself. It is is there a way to direct to online and on or on demand activities and videos? Um, that maybe don't have a, an actual physical location. So um, there's a, a kind of screen grab there um, of some videos that the Active Pregnancy Foundation have um, under the This Mum Moves um, brand, um, just some active at home videos. So yeah, is there a way to kind of uh, link to those or, or point to those or include those in an activity finder? So that's kind of a, a high level view, as I say, of the kind of discussions we've ha we had in, in the previous workshop. Um, in terms of next steps, so, there's some things that are kind of within the scope of Open Active uh, and um, are things that we can take to the W3C community group. Um, and uh, uh, the chair of that group, uh, Andrew's on the call, so I might come to him in a second just to kind of introduce the group and um, what the group does and how, you know, how, how they can relate to this work. But um, yeah, things like the safety information, qualifications that are held by the, the organizers and the new starter information and the amenity features. Um, and they can really um, look at the best way to um, incorporate those into the Open Active specifications, whether they are things that are already covered by the Open Active specifications, but maybe just need some kind of specific tailored guidance um, for users. Um, to help uh, people use the specifications in the right way for this particular audience, um, or whether there's any kind of additions or tweaks that might be needed to the um, specifications in, in order to incorporate some of this stuff. I think there's also some things that perhaps need wider consideration by others in, you know, others in the sector, other groups, or, or things that are slightly out of the scope of Open Active. So, for example, things like the imagery. Um, uh, we talked about perhaps there could be the development of a, an image library um, of appropriate images that activity providers can can use to um, to help promote their activities um, and things like could there be a list of um, approved qualifications for instructors uh, and organizations. And then once we kind of firmed up the, those kind of data requirements side of it, there's also that then that other side of 
how how do we actually get the get the data once we you know we know what data we need or, or want and, and what is needed by this audience how do we get that data who holds it uh, and how can we encourage them to open that data and most importantly open the data in the right way that they include this this type of information um and i've got some kind of uh questions um that we can hopefully have a bit of a discussion around from from now on um uh, so you'd be glad it's not just me talking talking at you the, the whole uh, whole hour today um, but yeah, maybe if I could just, before we come on to that, just quickly come to you, Andrew, and, and then you can kind of introduce the, the W3C group. Uh, yeah, thank you, Tim. So uh, the W3C community group is the group that owns the specifications that enable data to flow through the open active data ecosystem. Um, uh, th those specifications are um, written um, to enable data to be published on the web. Um, and they provide a structure uh, for information about facilities, sessions, slots, activities, and bookings. Um, and the specifications are pretty comprehensive. Um, but of course, W3 doesn't see that the group doesn't control how the specifications are applied by data providers. Um, we've been thinking about the roles of the AEF and the W3C group recently and i think what we've concluded is that the aef is a, a place where requirements can be agreed um, and i think this is a really nice example of the aef uh, looking at a set of requirements and agreeing what action needs to be taken yep. mm -hmm. um, but also uh, providing a place where all barriers and challenges and can be discussed so that solutions that are, are developed can can address the requirements but also consider the challenges um i think the w3c is essentially a place where those requirements are addressed and those requirements might be addressed by making changes to the specifications um changing the specifications is difficult because they are implemented in lots of different booking systems from lots of different providers but the other thing that w3c can do is is develop and provide guidance on how to use the specifications um, and 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 I think that's possibly the opportunity here. Um, so I, I think what we are getting from the work with the Active Pregnancy Foundation and hopefully this discussion with the the Adoption and Engagement Forum today is is that 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 requirement that the W3C can then consider and produce guidance against. I think I'll stop there. That's great. Thank you, um, Andrea. I think that's, that adds a bit of kind of useful um, context and introduction for, for people who are maybe not so familiar with Open Active and so familiar with the W3C group. Cool. So um, moving on then to a bit of hopefully a bit of a kind of open discussion. So um, how do we turn all these great insights and great information that we, we've gathered to date into action and into, you know, um, a tangible thing that can actually help people. Um, they, there are some questions on here, which I've put on here just to, to kind of hopefully provoke um, some of that discussion um, uh, and some of the considerations to, to try and, um, you know, get, get people thinking today. So, you know, kind of where is the data? Where is this data that we're, we're trying to get? Who are the activity providers that we need to engage um, and need to need to open their data? Um, and you know what awareness do we need to have of that kind of distinction between um, providers who are providing activities specifically um, designed or tailored for this audience, uh, and um, which activity providers are providing activities that might just be sort of open to having um, this audience come along, but it's sort of more at their own discretion and their, their own risk rather than it being a specifically designed or approved um, session for, for a pregnant woman. Um, what support do these organizations, do these providers need to make that data open? And, and some of these questions I think are, are kind of challenges that cover widely um, open active more generally uh, and aren't necessarily specific to this uh, this area. Um, but yeah, what support do providers need to open that data? And, and most importantly, to get that right data open, as I said, for, to get the good enough quality data and, and um, 
you know full enough data to include some of these things that we've been talking about today that really important information for this audience um and where does some of these responsibilities and accountabilities lie who who is it that is going to take ownership of some of this work who, who has the availability um to do some of this work um what is the cost to that is there any additional funding required to fund people to do this work or or does this work some fit between some organizations either on this call or, or other organizations that people can think of across the sector does it fit within some of that existing work um that's a that's a question to ask um and then kind of what challenges do you foresee or in publishing or consuming this data um and, and helping providers to, to get this data and get this data into the into a sort of directory um and really to you know to to create impact and, and to create something really useful for, for this audience so that that's kind of um just a bit of a starting point if, there, if there's anything else that that people are thinking of or any other questions that people would like to ask or or consider then yeah you know as i say i um would like to just kind of open that discussion discussion up and, and um see what see what the thoughts are of people on the call uh tom you're straight in there with your with your hand up come to you first hi there <laughs> cheers tim and um nice to hear about this um what's trying to happen here it sounds like it would be super beneficial my wife's pregnant at the moment as well so um she, she'd benefit from from using something like this um i guess key things that i'd highlight are i guess the different um data levels so at the opportunity level activity level organizer level place level actually getting booking systems that are open active compliant to add new fields to when people list their activities, I can foresee as potential challenge just because um, I think just needs a bit of consideration to understand whether like that data is um, like what data is valuable across the board, what data is specific to this use case. And like, I think in practice of sitting on both sides, of both having a booking system and a activity finder, like on the activity finder side, we really want as much good quality data as possible to provide like a deeper search experience. But on the booking system side, you want to balance how like a good user experience and people being able to, to list activities without being asked too many questions per se. So I think that just need to be a bit of thought going into like, okay, if the objective is to get this data, which is super important, just thinking, okay, realistically, if we get all the systems to implement this, how realistic is that to happen? Or is there a way that the, either you can identify an organizer level or a place level and augment the data that exists or, or create some sort of, um, I guess, to ensure that everything on there is kind of appropriate and to make sure the people that are listing stuff on there are getting a, an experience that makes sense it's about probably identifying organizers who are, I guess, approved or safe, and then starting from there and, and kind of building that publishing experience specifically around them. Um, that's basically where I'd see the, I can't imagine, for example, um, some of the bigger leisure management systems adding new fields in to capture this data, but um, it'd just be about understanding what can be done kind of augmenting existing data or customizing experiences. Great, thanks, Tom. Really, really useful insight. Um, and congratulations on your news. That's uh, first I, I'd heard that, so yeah, congratulations. Really exciting. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no, really, really useful insights. And um, yeah, I, th I think that certainly will be a challenge. I don't know if um, perhaps Sally or, or Molly, if you've got any thoughts on that kind of um, point Tom made there about um, whether there's a kind of approved organizations or, you know, an approved endorsement or mark or, or something like that against. Activity. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting how you, you mentioned that because um, we have, um, we worked on a pilot last year for an endorsement um, program and we're doing more with it this year. Um, so yeah, we are endorsing programs provided by um, PTs. It's a, it's a slow build. 
it takes it takes a lot of time to go through the process one to kind of uh find the pgs who want to take their program through the endorsement process but also the actual endorsement process itself so yet yeah, that is happening it's just happening slowly and also we need to broaden out in terms of you know what are we endorsing past just a, a kind of like a 12 week you know, um, yoga program for example so um yeah we're we're, we're doing that marley is there anything you wanted to add I think it would just be worth me understanding what potentially the challenges are in, in adding this, uh, let's say, the standard to existing standards. Um, and if it's worth perhaps making a case as to why this is so important, not just, you know, generally um, from, a, from a public perspective, but also for the operators themselves in terms of an untapped market. Um, to engage in physical activity throughout that their, that sort of crucial stage and, and life bearing years, uh, child bearing years, but but just to understand what those challenges might be in adding this um, user case or the requirements associated with this user case would be really valuable for me. Great, thanks, Maurice, and yeah, I think a really good question. I don't know, Andrew, would you be happy to take that one? I think I think that was sort of something you um, you mentioned in your. Uh, Bit introduction to the W3C about the challenges to to add additional things to the specifications. Uh, yeah, I can have a go at that, and I'm sure Tom has got a view, and perhaps Nick as well. Um, so I, I think fundamentally the challenge is that Open Active is a federated data infrastructure. Um, so there isn't a single point where all Open Active data is created. And I, I, what that means is that you, if you make a change to the specification or you add a requirement to the specification, there are many booking systems that would need to then consider how to apply that requirement in their back ends to enable the providers to capture the data and then for that data to flow through into the into the into the um, data feeds. Um, I, I don't think that is impossible but it would be i think it would be quite a long-term play um and there would have to be a demand from the activity providers to their system suppliers to make that happen i think um i think in the shorter term i think in the shorter term a lot of the sorts of information that tim outlined in the slides that we we want to capture could probably be captured somehow using the specifications as they are. And then it might be a case of providing guidance to people who are documenting activities so that they know what information to include in their in their documentation. So uh, every activity has a description, for example. So maybe as part of the description, there's some information that we want to include. Um, I think we can be quite flexible with how activities are tagged um, within the specifications. So maybe there's some particular tags that we want to use. Um, and, and I think, that, as, as I said, if we can come up with some requirements, we can then ask the the community group what the best way of addressing those requirements are, whether it's through guidance, whether it's through recommendations, whether it's by providing new code lists. Um, I, I think that's the, the that's the challenge. Tom, Nick, would you add anything to that? I was just going to say, yeah, I'd be. Can we go back like a couple of slides so I can actually look at the fields that we discussed? Because like from memory, I don't think any of them were like out of the ordinary. Um, I guess it's just, yeah, uh, on a venue level, amenities, et cetera, just, I think fundamentally that should be flexible. So it's like people can essentially put in their own, because we're looking at this um, in some other projects and like, um, it's there's so many different variations, which makes sense in different contexts that you might want to enable like more flexible tag, like include something about this, location or about this activity that's kind of tags it in a way so i think there's scope for doing that there like includes baby changing and then that builds like a i guess tag library that then can cut connect things together um nick will know about tagging more than i will but i think just yeah some smart search on like descriptions and um some tagging probably is the solution for a lot of this stuff. 
Thanks, Tom. Yeah, um, Nick, uh, yeah. happy to come to you if you want to add anything, but I'm, I'm conscious I don't, I don't want this to get too far into the... No, 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 I, I, I wasn't going to get into the detail at all. I was just going to say that sounds great. Uh, what Andrew said and what Tom said, brilliant. Um, use the descriptions. Use the free text fields. Use the, the things that already exist um, as much as possible, because unless you're trying to search for something by a particular criteria, there's no need to have it delimited out into a separate field. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, and the great thing about using description fields is that they're in every system. Um, so it's really easy to add guidance. Um, so yeah, great. Brilliant. Thanks, Nick. Um, uh, Jules, you've got your hand up. I'll come to you next. I think I'm coming down on Nick's side that uh, using text, so yeah, a keyword, a search facility, find pregnancy or changing, they would be much more easy than having, than sort of having to tag every single thing with everything like uh, um yeah i'm down to them so, so that, that's a really useful steer um so, so like marley if, if if we if we in open active and with, with the community group focus on providing guidance that on how to use the specifications how to fill out a, a facility or an activity to meet the requirements that you've highlighted through the work with tim we, we can produce that guidance quite quickly. The, the subsequent challenge is then how do we get that guidance to all of the people creating activities? So, and how do we promote that guidance? So they follow it. And I think that's probably something where the Active Pregnancy Foundation can help through your kind of networks of providers and by advocating around why this is important and why having these following yeah. these guidance. Uh Absolutely, and I, I, I can't see everybody on the call, but but certainly through the Active Partnerships Network, who manage quite a lot of the uh, directories and do local delivery as well, that that's one meaningful connection. Um, but then also through some of our other stakeholders, is about advocacy and raising awareness, and and <laughs> we see this as a bit of a long game. We appreciate that it will take time to get right, first of all, but also to get um, sort of fully um, implemented. So you're happy to support with, with anything that can bridge um, some of those barriers or challenges in terms of implementation, um, implementation through our networks. Great, thank you, Amalies. Uh, Jules, you've got your hand up. I just um, quickly before I come to you, and I don't know if this might be something you were, you were going to say anyway, but um, we've got quite a few active partnership people on the call, so I, I don't know if um, any of you have any thoughts on that point that Andrew and Molly's just made about kind of using the active partnership network uh, um, and any kind of opportunities you have in work you're already doing in this space with kind of women and girls or or, or health or, or this kind of um, area or and, and any barriers or challenges that you foresee in in trying to promote this kind of thing uh, across your networks. Uh, Jules. Sorry, you're muted, Jules. I think you unmuted and muted in one in one fell swoop. Oh, too many damn buttons. Uh, yeah, and I was thinking about the option of uh, directories, uh, how far we've moved on with that. So when they haven't got an activity open at any particular time, they would still be visible for people who want to touch base. Have we got a solution for that yet? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know if, Tom, if you've got any thoughts on that. Sorry to keep coming back to you. <laughs> As an activity finder specialist. Sorry, Sorry I was just halfway through eating some crisps, so apologies. <laughs> um, so can you just repeat the question? Sorry, Jules, just quickly. I wasn't I missed a it bit was of it. The, it's when there's an activity on a finder, mm -hmm. people can see it. Mm -hmm. But when there isn't a finder, there's nothing. So there's no there's no way of building a, an open directory system so people can find the pregnancy support group whether they have a, an activity that particular time or not, but just somewhere yeah. that's a, a, a permanent list of things. And we were talking about having a solution, but we haven't worked out how far we've got. So no yeah, so it's, it's basically an organ, organizer directory. Um, yeah, I think there's been conversations about this on in a few different clubs, organize, organizers, and how they all relate to each other. Um, it's something that we're we're exploring but also um uh, i think a number of other other people are as well it's uh well, I'm, it's a... I'm, I'm starting a fight with uh open referral uk because they are very directory based 
and we're very activity based and if the two could work together that would uh that'd be fab but i don't know if how possible yeah. that is what well, yeah i think it's without getting too technical and boring that's the call it's essentially associated data to an activity so it's just I think when there's no associated activity, it gets a little bit more challenging as a user experience because you've just got a list of things. There's tons of list of things, but it's like ha having a different view or searching at a different level, whether you're searching the, the organizer and their opportunities or you're just searching a list of organizers and opportunities. So it's um, trying to balance that really between like, what already exists in the data and then giving a different search for different use cases but yeah it's pretty possible today we're, we're, we're working on it just jumping in on that i know sally's waiting really patiently thank you um I, the, the, we have got some proposals about how to use the open active specifications to describe clubs and we are trying to take those forward through w3c at the moment um a few people know the last couple of meetings haven't had enough attendees to, to have that discussion fully um but we know london sport are also looking at club organizer data within um open sessions um and we can see some some real opportunity around this um what we want to avoid is everybody doing that differently which is why we want to provide some guidance on how to use our specifications to do it um on the open referral bit um open referral and open active are broadly interoperable um you, you, you can mix them together and indeed we have demonstrated again with london sport that it's really easy once you have open active data to transform it into open referral data it's a bit harder to go the other way um but they're, they're, they're compatible standards they use the sort of same technical basis um so yeah, but... Great. thank you yeah i think i went off on a slight tangent there but yeah still um still useful and i think um could certainly apply to this um this uh conversation as well um you know whether it might be a particular organization or, or organizer that has accreditation or or um you know an endorsement um uh, rather than you know the, and the, you know, it might be easier to be able to find them <laughs> in a directory rather than necessarily the individual activities that those pro providers are offering. Uh, Sally, thank you for waiting so patiently. <laughs> no, it's all good. I don't know if it's relevant, but I just think one of the challenges uh, that is interesting to me as, a, as previously a personal trainer is really articulated the value added for those who are providing activities in terms of you know the administrative burden because i've seen you know you can go on to directories and and when they're not up to date they're as good as sort of pointless really and um coming from you know a freelancer perspective how much of my time would i be spending kind of keeping that up to date to ensure that it's relevant and interesting for those who i'd like to come to my classes for example and how do we who manages that how do we kind of keep those who are on board on board and make sure that they continue to process the information in a way that makes it relevant and up to date and how do we also sell back to them well you know you are getting more people are you getting more people what are you seeing is there has been a change for you personally as a trainer um from being part of this directory so it's kind of like the the sell and the continued sell um and i'm not quite sure how that's happening in our thoughts yet and i'd love to kind of discuss that maybe at a future date yeah i think that's a really great point sally thank you and uh, i think that's something that applies to open active more broadly as a challenge um and, and not just uh in in terms of this particular audience or particular top, topic area but um yeah I, I don't think it's necessarily an easy answer or an easy challenge to solve but yeah I, I, it's part of um the idea behind open active were, was helping to stop that duplication of admin for for providers and that if they could you know publish and maintain their data in in one place then all these other organizations and activity finders can all pull from that one place without that provider having to duplicate their admin across all those different activity finders so so yeah in a kind of 
ideal world that is a, that particular um problem is, is hopefully something or you know maybe a bit of a bit of a sell to um providers but i think also a challenge that's um come up in in forums and, and open active forums and open active discussions before is is that kind of um you know those some of those grassroots providers don't necessarily need or, or want a huge influx of people to their classes because because they might be struggling to cope with demand as it is so so that idea of creating more reach for them is not is not necessarily a real real selling point or real value add like as you described because um they almost they, they're at max capacity and they're struggling to get enough volunteers and enough instructors and things to cope with the demand they've already got so yeah really interesting one can I just jump in quickly yeah, so to hold the mic? Um, I think um, this use case it will be slightly different to that because I would assume that a lot of the providers will be a bit more businesses who have got quite a strong incentive to um, drive more reach. So I think there's just contextualizing that around the different providers, like we are involved in different spaces and like, for example, it's a lot easier to get, say, a golf coach who wants to make a bit more money because he wants to attract more people than it is for a club who is a non-profit. So I think just having that insight in terms of engagement is something to balance. And I think, like, again, there'll be a variety of different organizations that will be hopefully part of this platform, but it's just understanding, like, where their incentives are and, and how to... How to talk to them. I think, sorry, just jumping in, but I think what's quite interesting about this space is how many individual freelancers are working in it as PT instructors. Um, but I mean, the, in the grand scheme of things, there's not thousands and thousands of them, but you know, they're, they're usually women, usually working on their own um, in kind of so little areas in local places. Sorry, Lindsay, you were you were keen to say something. No, it's just the stuff what you're saying there. I um so what I've been doing with my smaller is we've been targeting um the more smaller organizations, so those little people that don't have manpower. And I've just been uploading it for them. So I've been starting their open sessions account for them because they don't have the booking system. It's normally text my number off a Facebook group type of thing. I've been uploading it and then they've been left to sort of maintain the open sessions account and maintain making sure everything's up to date from the back of that and that seems to have been working quite well as long as I've done the initial legwork for them the, the hard bit so to speak um they've then been quite happy to maintain it um so that's the way it works obviously over here but then I'm it, that's that's what I do I just upload things and check a website so yeah I don't know if that's sort of something that may work Thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, I, th I think that's um, that's really interesting. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, the potential question is that is then is, you know how how would that be replicated and and where would that um, kind of resource or that that time come from for to for someone to do the the job that you're doing? You know, but would other active partnerships be able to do that or fulfil that role, or, or would there be other organisations in the sector that would that maybe be able to? Um, offer some of that support to to organizations to give them that that kind of initial leg up or that or that initial help um yeah We're looking at the uh some Question. data scraping you know dave from nautica dave yeah i, th I think I, I do certainly I, i'm not sure everyone on the call would would know him. He, he's been on this one uh a, yes we're looking active partnerships looking at what we can actually do that will look out on the internet and harvest the data rather than actually having everyone having to log in and do stuff so that's I don't know how that's working yeah out, but but I, manually uploading stuff is is not the best solution i understand where it's like a good start to like kick start where the um supply side come from but just should be from the source of truth and I'll, we can have a conversation offline but a lot of the club data a lot of the places data already exists like if you go on google maps and search these things this data exists so it's all coming from a source of truth which is way below listing it in a spreadsheet anywhere or uploading it manually onto the system so it's it i i think i'm a little, getting a little bit concerned about like this kind of it needs to be done in certain scenarios but like some of the spe specifications i've seen from london sport for example for clubs has been like quite worrying to be honest where a lot of that data should be coming from a deeper source of truth 
Okay, I th we're just coming um, towards the end of uh, end of the time we have available, unfortunately. So I might have to draw the the conversation to a close there. But um, thank you very much for for everyone for um, joining and for um, taking part in the, in the discussions. I think there's been some really interesting, really useful things to take away, and, and perhaps some um, things to pick up um, in in other forums or or other meetings because uh, uh, some some interesting. Um, tangents <laughs> that, that are maybe sort of related to this but you know that the slight um you know slightly apply to to open act more broadly than, than this as well um in terms of next steps just very quickly um we will take andrew and i will take um away the bits and pieces that we can take to the w3c group and and we'll let everyone know um, the date of that the next w3c group will be two weeks from today um so i think we might be able to get it onto the agenda for that one if not it will be the, the subsequent one after that um but yeah we can we can let people know through um through uh, our social media channels and through slack and things so, so keep an eye on those um and then we will need to have um a kind of discussion about how we take some of those other other points um uh, that maybe need uh, wider sector um, kind of input and thoughts um you know what what the best forums to take those forward in are as well so so we can maybe take that away with um sally and molly and come up with a bit of a plan of, of how we take that forward as well but yeah thanks very much for for joining everyone it's been it's been great to have you all here um and i hope you found the the meeting and the session useful the next um adoption engagement forum will be in four weeks time uh, the next W3C meeting, as I say, will be two weeks from today and in the same time slot, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. So, yeah, I hope to see um, a lot of you in, in future meetings as well. And, um, yeah, hope to hope to speak to you all soon. Thank you very much.